The RNLI has been saving lives for two centuries. But off the coast of Dorset, it's trialling new equipment to respond to its most recent challenge, rescuing migrants crossing the channel in small boats. We've been working very hard again with a new industry partner to come up with something we call sea stairs, um, which we believe will be a game changer. Today, for the first time, the RNLI revealed its volunteers saved the lives of 108 people crossing the channel who would have died without their assistance. That's almost a third of all those saved by the charity in the UK and Ireland last year. We're talking about conventional means of getting people out of the water. It would take possibly one to two minutes per person. This piece of equipment has been proven to get at least 20 people out in 90 seconds. We've been presented sometimes with numbers of 40 or 50 or up to 60 people. I think it's fair to say the numbers that are now being presented in these small, unseaworthy boats is on the increase. Are you proud of what you do, the work you do here? I think everybody in the RNLI is immensely proud of all of our life saving across all of the UK and Ireland. But of course, we're especially proud that a small cluster of stations has saved 108 lives last year. And that's a really important figure for a charity that is designed to save lives at sea. But with 45,000 migrants arriving on small boats last year and double that expected this year, the RNLI's work has attracted high-profile criticism. A few years ago, the former Brexit party leader, Nigel Farage, accused the RNLI of being a taxi service for migrants. Um, do you accept that in some ways the people smugglers, their business model relies on you being there to rescue people who get into trouble? The RNLI is, is tasked by His Majesty's Coast Guard, who, who make the determination of need and distress. When our crews are alerted, they don't know what they're alerted for. They simply are alerted by a pager to say someone is in distress and they need to launch the lifeboat. They'll then muster at the station, get changed, launch the lifeboat, and only then will they start to get an indication of whether they're being tasked to a, a small boat with 60 casualties on board, a yachtsman in distress, or a fisherman. But you know, when you look at the, some of the new techniques you've been demonstrating today, some might say, well, that's a pull factor because people crossing will be better guaranteed that they might be rescued if they get into trouble. I don't think there's any guarantee of being safe at sea. The sea is a very dangerous place. All we're trying to do is understand a risk that has been presented to us, not only in the South East Channel, but the work we're doing to improve and get on the front foot with mass casualty rescue techniques will have relevance across all of the RNLI. Lifeboat volunteers don't see migrants or asylum seekers, just people at risk of drowning. Fundamentally, people rescue people. And that's what the RNLI has been doing for 199 years. What did people you pick up in the channel when they've come on these, as you say, unseaworthy vessels, what do they say to your volunteers when they get rescued? Thank you. Um, there's the, the level of distress that's presented when you arrive on, on, on scene is, is, is quite palpable and, and it does affect the crews when you hear women screaming, babies being thrown at the lifeboat so that they get rescued first. You can imagine it's a very chaotic and, and traumatic scene. So, of course, there is a sense of relief, as there is a sense of relief for any casualty. You've clearly got a growing mission on your hands with the small boats, um, if the government's figures do prove to be correct. Have you, got volunteer, have you got volunteers coming in in sufficient numbers? Volunteering is always difficult, especially when you're volunteering for an operational life-saving service, because not only do our volunteers have to respond to the pager in the middle of the night, they also have to undertake a huge amount of training. We're used to managing churn in volunteering, with volunteers leaving, um, but we have some stations where they're queuing up with long lists of volunteers to join. On Sunday alone, more than 600 migrants crossed the channel, the highest daily number so far this year. With the fine weather enticing more to make the journey, the RNLI is sadly certain its new equipment will be needed. Rishi Sunak's ability to meet his promise to stop the boats may be more doubtful.